Vlogmas people in the place to be. Hello. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Vlogmas. In today's video, we are going to be uh, preparing for our balzo. But before then, my mom is still in town. If you saw the last episode, you know that. Uh, we went to Baltimore yesterday, and today we are going to go back to the Christmas market that I showed y'all in episode one so my mom can see that. We're gonna do lunch at Tate and just, you know, flutter around the city. And the rest of my packages should be here by tomorrow so we can pack together. But let's get outside, I'll show you my outfit first. Also y'all, I got this little chain from my new cell phone case, which y'all saw in episode two. I'm loving this. This is Caseify, Caseify. Um, and I forgot where that's from, but my mom picked it up for me from Target. So, she's giving rich. Sorry that it's dark in here, y'all. There is no sun out whatsoever. So, seasonal depression be damned, okay? Make your own sunlight. But <laughs> my glasses are by Warby Parker. My earrings are by Natia and Lacko. You all saw my Jill Sonder t-shirt in my last episode of Vlogmas. Um, I told you all that this is very very thick it's a thick cotton and it is so thick and oversized y'all until i have a hard time putting it into my coat but <laughs> we'll make it work all right it's just the sleeves kind of scrunch up nevertheless i think this is a sign that it's good quality so i'm happy with it um my jeans are the curvy jeans by abercrombie big fan of those those are a black friday pickup i got them in a size 10 long a little big in the waist but i think they fit well everywhere else and then my shoes are some deacon board penny loafers uh, i got these from j crew many moons ago but i think the look is kind of giving smart casual and today's bag is going to be the goyard clutch and i am going to put my asos coat or my top shop coat on top we actually ended up at Tyson's because it's raining in DC. So we are right now at the mall and we're going to get lunch. We're in Macy's, it's so cute. I've taken a break from Freak 75s and I started drinking extra dirty martinis. My mom just got bit by the Aesop bug. I don't live. It is amazing in here. Have y'all tried Aesop products? I think they are like one of the best streamlined brands for house and home they have candles and room fragrances also skincare and body care for me they're up there with deptique and they also have really nice candles Just took mom to the airport, came back home because I was kind of semi-dressed for the day. So I am about to go in the back and actually put on a face. So let's do this together. Um, I always kind of struggle with doing my makeup with you guys on camera, but we'll see how far we get. So y'all, I have kept my makeup in many places in my house. Now we are in my primary bathroom. I moved it back in here maybe about a month ago. I don't know how I feel about it. I really need a vanity in my bedroom. But here we are for now, okay? Um, this is my closet clearly for my towels, my linens, and also I have all of like my skincare products in these bins from Amazon. But uh, let's get to the makeup. 
Um, another bin. I'm a bin queen, y'all. So let's start with my base. I have been using kind of a mix between the Nessa Myricks Blurring Balm and the Milk Hydro Gel Primer. I already have a little bit of blurring balm on, so I'm only going to use the Hydro Primer. Um, while I have oily skin, I find this Hydro Primer works well, y'all, because the makeup I'm about to use, the foundation, the Estee Lauder Double Wear sticks to your skin like glue. And then here is my Double Wear color. I use 7C1 Rich Mahogany. And my foundation brush is the Pro Foundation 70 brush by Sephora. really like this foundation y'all but when I tell you it ends up just like sticking to my face and I don't know what to do about that like I can't spread it and again I think that's part of the appeal that people like because it is long lasting and it is also matte I mean like I just put this on my face and nothing is coming off. But again, like on my nose and stuff, sometimes I notice that the foundation is dark because I cannot <laughs> blend it fast enough. So I like the double wear. I just want to know how to spread it evenly. Next we have the NARS Truffle in Medium Dark. Y'all, this is my concealer. For all times I don't think I will ever have another one I just love it so much and I just put it in parts of my face that I want to bring a little bit of lightness back to beauty blender that I've been trying to use a setting spray between layers and so I'm going to go ahead now before I even set my concealer and use the airbrush setting spray by Charlotte Tilbury. I have been a long time fan of Urban Decay setting powder or setting spray but this one is giving it a run for its money. I got that during the Sephora sale and I'm happy that I did. Let's get to setting. We're going to use the Translucent Medium Deep Laura Mercier setting powder. It's not necessary. I mean, some days, especially if I'm just like out and about, I do not do this. I always do it though if I'm filming just because I think it provides a nice highlight under my eyes. But again, it's not necessary, especially if I am trying to do a quick face. And they say you put it wherever it is that you highlight. I'm not one to bake but I do let it kind of sit in while I do my brows I did my brows before I left but let me just give them a little touch up Anastasia Beverly Hills brow Wiz. my color is ebony and this goes darker and much lighter but it is one of the few pencils I feel like are women of color friendly as far as the shade is concerned so just filled those in. And then I go to my favorite part, which is eye makeup. Weston Atelier sent this to me. I haven't used it at all and I've been wanting to. So let's see what it does. Weston Atelier is a like luxury natural brand in that their prices be pricing. 
but I have used like their lip kits and things and I actually really like them. So. Okay, okay. Oh, the color did kind of come through a little. It did a little something. It's not, you know, the most obvious as far as color is concerned. Let's focus on eyes. We're gonna start with the Urban Decay Primer. And I have oily skin, so using a primer does two things. Number one, it keeps my shadow from creasing, but I also really like it because I feel like depending on the color, it just makes it a little bolder. It makes the shadow stick. All right, I am wearing, as you can see, this green sweater. And so I kind of want to put on a shadow today that um, has like purple in it. I think purple and green go well together. I have the Juvia's Place Culture 2 palette. This is from Ulta. Blue would also eat, but I think I'm gonna go with shades of purple. So I'm gonna use Safari and also Jolof. And we'll see. I don't think I've used Safari at all before, so I don't know what that's gonna give. Okay, ooh, okay, color payoff is nice. And I already know I'm gonna do like a gloss or something nude on my lips. I don't like to do a bold shadow or like a bold eye and a bold lip. I think it's definitely a way to do that, but I'm not skilled enough as far as my makeup is concerned <laughs> to know what that way is. If y'all have any tips, let me know. Because for me, I tend to like to do one or the other. And then I'm gonna dust on top of this some of that Jolof because it is much more of a um, almost like loose shadow or loose metallic, which I don't always love. I don't know why brands do that. It's like just because something is a metallic doesn't mean I want to put glitter on my eyes. It can still have a nice base to it and actually stick. So I end up having to layer this a bunch for it to show up, but it's turning out real nicely. I don't know if y'all can see that. And then we'll put a little bit of a deeper color in the crease, and that will be the eyes. This brush, I can't even tell you where that came from. I use a mix of um, eyeshadow brushes. I will link some of my faves down below. But just know that it tends to be something that's flat and that's easy for me to apply because I do end up kind of like building my lash, not my lash, Lord. I do end up building my shadow on top of itself or the colors on top of each other. If this is looking very stark, I'm gonna go in and blend it. I'm gonna use Sephora 19 brush. This is actually a concealer brush, but I like it to blend in because it does have this little bit of an angle. So it gets that crease going nicely. And for me, I always use like a deeper color in my crease, but I try to use a color that blends well with the rest. And so that brownish, Burgundy is called Dashiki. Clean this up just to make sure I don't have a lot of color outside of my eyes. And I always do a little bit of a gold or something kind of in the tear duct. So I'm going to do this Luna Magic Desmunda palette. I think this is from Target. It's another black owned brand. And the shade Sister, which is that bronze there. This is probably technically like a lip brush, but I like the angle to it because I think it works well right in my tear duct. Let's go back to our angled brush to blend. 
My favorite mascara as of late is by Sephora. It's called Big. Big by definition. I am going to put on false lashes today, but I just want you all to see how much definition and volume this mascara gives. I have extremely curly natural lashes. They're full and they're long, but you can barely tell because they're so curly. But this is the only mascara that I feel like really gives me the kind of volume that I like. So I think this mascara is bomb. I really, really, really like it. Um, before I put on my falsies though, let me go ahead and do my um, highlight and my blush. I start first with blush. I have an RMS Beauty cream blush. This color is called Elusive. It actually is cream to cheek and so you can use it for both. And let's put my blush on first because I like for my highlight to sit on top of my blush. Like a nice berry shade. It's not too bright. And my blush is going to be by, I mean my highlight is going to be by Haas Labs. This shade is called Bronzed maybe. It's rubbed off, but it's from Sephora, y'all. Then I have this highlight brush from Sephora. It's called the Pro Fan Brush. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. I think that's actually blending together very pretty. A little bit on the tip of that nose, even a little coming down the bridge. That's very cute. I have been forgetting. I don't know why I cannot remember this daggone setting spray. I can't say between this and the Longwood Foundation. It's a bad B collabo. Definitely my foundation lasts much longer than it ever has with those two things combined. Before we get to lips, we're going to do lashes. And let me just say that the trick to lashes that I found is this. And if I don't have these because I've misplaced them, I use tweezers. But I love these lash tweezers from Sephora. Lashes I'm using today are Ardell Wispies 120. These are a little bit longer than my typical ones. They don't look as natural, but I picked these up from like, I don't know, Marshalls or TJ Maxx or something. And I'm also using um, the Ardell glue, nothing fancy. I go back and forth between a black glue and a clear glue, and I tend to prefer a black one. Because sometimes when the clear glue dries, it's a little bit more apparent, in my opinion. I think you can make more mistakes with the black glue and it blends better with your natural lash line. And I just brush the glue on. The trick that I'm not always very patient with is to let the glue get tacky and to not put the lashes on too soon. So we're gonna let that relax and I'll decide what lip combination I want to do today. Um, I told you guys I'm going to do new, but let's see. Just did a bit of a swatch test, which I've never done before at home, but it actually wasn't a bad idea just to see the shades that everything comes out at. I think I'm going to go with this shade down here. I mean, you can barely see it because it is more of a true nude, and I think it'll look good with a gloss on top. This was in a bag, y'all, and I pulled it out, and I don't think I've used it, like, in a year. I completely forgot that I had this. I think this is a black owned brand. I got it from a local black owned shop called Nubian Human, but um, the brand is High Wildflower, and then the shade is Mati Nude. So I'm just gonna use my OG Triple OG NARS Chestnut Lip Liner and line my lips first. I use 
a lot of liner, so it's coming across more brown than what it is, but it's because I'm going to put a light gloss on top. This is a gloss that was sent to me by City Beauty. It's a pink nude. It is very pink, y'all. So, again, that's why I wanted to go darker. I'm just going to put it in the middle. So, it almost gives me like an ombre lip. It's a little washed out. Let's check the lashes and see what they are giving. That one needs a little bit more time to dry. This one is perfect. The key to knowing which lash is which is obviously you put the shorter lashes on the inner corner of your eye. So that's how I know this one is for my left eye. And because my lashes are very curly, what I have to do is put this behind my natural lash. So give me a minute. B I B I. All right, I feel like this is on. Oh, this also has that flat side. So if you just gotta go in, girl, and get that thing real right along that lash line. I'm showing out today. No, I'm showing out for y'all because it literally took me two seconds to do that. I am so proud of myself. All right, let's see if I have as much luck with the next one. Makeup is done. We're going to do one more highly unnecessary round of setting spray. But I just feel like, girl, I'm addicted. I just, I just gotta get that thing in place, okay? Just get the hair really laid down. Oh, y'all, I'm wearing a rat tail. I don't know if I showed y'all here, but let me show you. My barber said it's giving a Prada sign, but that's only because it hasn't grown out yet. I cannot wait until it gets lengthy. I think she wants me to like dread it. I, I've had locks before, by the way. I'll insert a picture. Um, but I don't want to lock my hair. What I really want to do is just let it get long and braid it and beat it like my Aunt Brenda, who y'all saw um, at Thanksgiving. So. This is me like swooping my baby hairs, just in case she was wondering. All right, I'm gonna get in some light and show you the finished makeup because I think it turned out really well today. This is usually my spot to come to just to really see my makeup and what it's giving. And I think it's just a natural glowy beat, again, with the focus being on the eye makeup. Uh, Y'all always compliment my eye makeup. Thank you so, so much. And for me, that's kind of... I think my strongest makeup skill and so I like to play a lot with color and again to do a new lip to kind of tone it down a bit um, but it is one of the parts of the routine that I get the most joy out of especially when I can go do a complimentary color to what I am wearing and so I wear so much black and so many neutrals until today I'm loving this sweater a cardigan by a brand called BB. You all would have saw me pick this up, I think in a previous episode of Vlogmas at a little boutique in um, downtown or in Baltimore in the Hampton neighborhood. And so before we get out of here, I'll show you the rest of my outfit. So today's OOTD, I have layered necklaces here. Uh, this middle pendant, you all saw me actually unbox this last Vlogmas from a black-owned brand called All Masika. Another black-owned brand, which I've seen a bunch of times, the nature of the label, that's the Divine Feminine necklace, and then just like a very thin hair and bone chain. Uh, most of my ear piercings are from Greece, so I can't link those, but just know I have too many piercings to count. Sweater is by the brand BB, and I got it from the boutique in Baltimore. I am wearing a pair of skinny denim. These are kind of acid wash by Universal Standard. These are the ones that are, that are the size eight, and they are stretched now. So definitely recommend going down a size, and that is a very size inclusive brand as well. They go from a zero zero to a size 30. And I am wearing the pair of Cameron Western boots in white as you can see with the silver toe tap and these are by Dolce Vita and because I have the tigers on the cardigan let me show you what coat I'm gonna do it's probably gonna be the cost coat y'all know I grabbed this in the Black Friday haul it has a matching mini skirt today it's going to be 64 degrees and so the fact that it's not lined and more of an overcoat I think works 
Um, and tonight, if I go out, I'm definitely gonna put the skirt on. But that's the vibe. Um, I'm probably gonna roll up the sleeve so you can see a little bit of that peak of green. Something is, my allergies are just out of this world, y'all. And then we're gonna do the Byredo Black Saffron. It almost has a sweet and peppery fragrance. Not too sweet, more fresh. But that reminded me I grew up with a boy named Too Sweet. But it wasn't like a play on his femininity, like literally. His family called him Too Sweet and everybody else did and we just, Hey, too sweet if you're watching. Anyway, that's the look, girl. That's the look. Oh, let me cut open this other pocket and get outside. Finally made it down to the center of the city. It is packed out here, y'all. Uh, we've been trying to find some place to eat. Set the tag where we tried to go first and they are fully packed, so is me beat up. But listen, it's a vibe. There's a band back there, they cranking, they playing really nice music, so everybody's just kinda out in the city. And because it is darker than typical, it feels so late and it's only like six o'clock. So let's see what we get into for the rest of tonight. Good morning, good people. It's super dark in here. Wait a second. Oh my God. I'm just so sick of the dreariness. But that's all right. We'll be in Miami in a couple days. It's a new day. I am feeling good. Uh, we hung out yesterday a bit in the city. Um, our plans kind of got derailed, so I'm not sure how much of it you saw. We actually just ended up like listening to records at a friend's house, drinking a little bit, and then going out to eat at Tap House and walking through the Christmas market. So that was kind of the day. Um, and uh, I am up kind of later than typical, number one, because it's so dreary outside, but also it's Sunday and I just want to get more rest in during the weekends. And so I uh, got up, made my coffee, watched a little bit of Vlogmas, uh, Tamara Kalinich her channel. Y'all let me know down below whose vlog misses are you watching and I want to check them out. Uh, I don't watch a lot of vlogs so I need y'all help to let me know who has really good vlogs this time of year. Um, right now I am about to do my gratitude journal. I am going to eat breakfast, work out, and then I'll come back and we will get to packing, girl. I'm so excited about a few outfits that I feel like have started to come together that I want to show y'all for my Miami. Hey guys, let's get into these Art Basel looks. It's after my workout, but first, let's put on a little pair of earrings. These are super old from Bobble Bar. And some perfume. I took a shower and just threw on a pair of very comfortable lounge pants from Vuri and this brunch sweatshirt from Tate. 
Um, and I think I am feeling today this Flower Bomb Ruby Orchid. It is a new fragrance, new-ish, I guess. It's newer than the original by um, Victor and Rolf. I think they come out with different versions of this quite often, actually. Uh, and I always kind of hit the same spots. I go here, under my neck, and behind my leg, and behind my neck. So, um, not going anywhere, but I love the idea of smelling good at home. Um, let me just have a sip of this. Celsius first y'all. I'm really trying to not drink multiple cups of coffee a day. I don't know if this is much better but it's definitely less sugar. So zero grams of sugar. That's cute. It's my first time having a mango passion fruit. So let's get started. Now for folks who do not know my Amy Art Basel is about a week or so of an international art hub or fair there will be artists from all over the world who show their work huge big name artists like Mickalene thomas smaller artists people who may be lesser well known smaller galleries and oftentimes what happens is a couple things number one there are big tents along collins avenue i could think of um one big fair in particular that traditionally happens and most people buy tickets and you get to go inside and you see artwork from around the world you can purchase it there you can follow those artists etc another thing that happens is smaller galleries will kind of post up um, in smaller locations or hotel lobbies and um, rooms at hotels, etc. And they curate Art Basel collections. And a lot of times, because I actually know someone personally who did this, artists also have to pay to get their work shown. But they think of it as an investment because it's exposure and it will definitely be more eyes on their photography, painting, sculptures, etc. than would traditionally be. So this will be my third, I think, Basel, um, third or fourth, but I think this will be my third Basel. The last time I went was December 2019, so it's been quite some time since then. I've just honestly been working. Um, I have been building my business. I became a solopreneur in October 2020. So December, I definitely wasn't traveling. Um, I was hands on deck as far as my work is concerned. And so it feels really good to have actually been able to plan this and look forward to it. Um, for me, y'all know I am from Florida. So Miami feels like a second home. I have so many family members who are from South Florida. I am from Central Florida, Polk County, stand up, okay? Um, but I am in and out of South Florida all the time. And so to be able to go there at the end of the year when it's cold here feels amazing speaking of that the weather is going to be probably like high to low 80 so it's not like suffocatingly hot like it was in july during swim week but it's also warm enough that you don't need a coat obviously and i might just take like a moto jacket for aesthetics at night so i'm thinking about what am i going to wear this is an art fair y'all so i know for sure i'll be going to some events and going to some of um the gallery spaces and so i want to dress in a way that is fun and has some flair so one of the things i thought about you've seen is my jill saunders shirt I was thinking of how to explain this to you all because I just keep saying it's heavier than a t-shirt. It is a mix between a t-shirt and a sweatshirt. That's the best way to describe it. Now, last night, what I was thinking is what if, what if we put this right here together? I'm gonna try this on separately, so let me just slide over and we'll put it here to see if it actually worked and how I style it up. But what I'm thinking is the skirt, which you all already know, this was in my Farfetch haul. It is a 16 Arlington skirt. No, I have been too lazy. I have not gotten it um, taken in in the waist. But the more I think about it, I actually might not because it fits so low that it's long enough for me because if not, I got a lot of ass and a lot of leg. Um, this would be a micro mini on me. And so it fits so low on my waist that I think it works. And my idea was to wear the shirt untucked. I mean, you're saying this, I don't have to actually hold it like this, but to wear the shirt untucked. Now, I don't know what shoes. I could see boots with this. What shoes would I do, y'all? I can see a pump. 
I can see my Aquazura sandals. I can see my Loewe sandals. Hold on. I will already be in Miami, but y'all comment down below. <laughs> Let me know. The other thing, y'all, is it's going to be so much walking and standing. I don't want to be in a situation to where my shoes have a time limit. And so this would be really easy to wear, and it would dress up the t-shirt for sure. These are the Aquazura. I think they're called Delilah or Dahlia. Darling. Darling sandals. Where did I get Delilah from? Um, Darling sandals. They're super comfortable, but... If we're going to go with the edge of the whole look, this is the one I think. You already said it, girl. I know. The seat buckles. Yeah, the seat buckles would eat that right. Ooh, they would eat that thing right on up. Okay. I'm going to try it on. The other idea I had, y'all, the other idea I had, hear me out. No, 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 I'm lying. I'm lying. Hold on. I have three pair of Jordans. These are definitely the ones that look the best because they've been worn the least. But what if we did added a little pop of color? I think there's something about a high top sneaker that I might like more than a low top sneaker, even though the black Samba matches the best. Um, so we'll see. We'll see which look gives the most. But what I also wanted to do, um, another option, obviously, is to wear a sneaker during the day and if I keep the same outfit on at night to switch it to a heel. But what I thought about doing, because it is a t-shirt, is to dress it up with a bag. And for me, I think this could really be a vibe. This is the Caperni bag that I also got in that Farfetch video. And I was telling y'all then that I really feel like what Caperni hit out the park was the placement of these rhinestones. I just think it looks very, very luxe. Something like this is probably at, I don't know, a million other retailers. But there's something about the way that they do it that I feel like is exceptional. I still have the paper in this, so... It doesn't fit a whole lot, but y'all know I'm a fan of a micro bag, and I think it would work very well to add a little bit of edge and style. So that is one look for sure. We just got to figure out the accessories. <laughs> Look number two, so nasty, so rude. Icon, black on bread, Chris Capillary. Sis, we love you. She's made this super, super maxi skirt. And then what she said, because she loves us, is that she's going to make it a set. super tall and so something like this for me at my height is always the way to go and I got it in this color specifically because I was thinking about Miami I was thinking about spring I was thinking about kind of breaking up all of the black in my wardrobe this time of year this is a knit by the way and so I love the fact that um, even though it's a bright color the fabric choice is giving fall um, I wouldn't say winter, but it's definitely giving fall. So, obviously, when I wear color like this, y'all, one of the things that I really, really like to do is to mix it with white or with a metallic. My white Versace shoes would eat this up. And I do think I'm going to do this for a photo shoot, for sure, because I think it gives just an amazing street style look. Oh, wait a minute, y'all. Y'all remember when I was in Greece? I got these. These are Celine. Yes! 
Um, but <clears throat> going back to preserving my feet, these shoes hurt so bad until they make you want to just go on a rampant uh, violence spree. Like it just makes you want to, I, I, I don't know, I can't even describe the level of pain that you just want to inflict on other people because that's how your pinky toe feels. Um, and so outside the photo shoot, I thought about what about metallic? So let's play with it. Now the skirt is very long. In the front, you can see a little bit of the top of my foot, but not much. So that's what makes this kind of tough for me. It's the most comfortable shoe. Y'all, these are the Sam Edelman mules. They're very reminiscent of the Bottega mules. I think it is a perfect, like inspired by shoe for a fraction of the price. And when I put this on, I actually really liked it and it was very comfortable. But sometimes with maxi length things, it's a little difficult because at least I'm like this. I don't want everything to be covered. There has to be a break in something. And so having my toes covered with a maxi skirt is hard. So then there's the Zimmerman tie-ups. Okay, back to metallics being a neutral. That's possible. And the Tories, I thought about, but there's something about the square toe on those that's not, it's not working for me. And yeah, I mean, I'm looking down. I can't really think of another shoe unless I did, oh, I could color block. Give me a second. I shouldn't say color block, but like go for a tonal effect because these are more of a yellow. But, you know, when they're down here, I don't know, y'all. Maybe that's not a good look. All these colors are a bit blown out right now, by the way. Let me see this other one too. These are the Bottega stretch mules that I got from the outlet that I almost got a bag this color and now I'm kind of wishing that I did because I think if the bag matched the shoe, the tonality of it would definitely work. But I would have to wear a white bag or a silver bag and it would make this look a little bit less intentional um so i'm not sure of a shoe choice yet y'all let me know this is by the same black owned brand that i got my cargos by um and so we love them and she sent this over and i know it probably looks like a very simple black sweater dress with bell sleeves but what you're going to get into my dear is the fact that all of this is actually netted and so it's sheer and then we have That thing is nasty. Um, they also sent me this amazing, amazing dress that I may try on for y'all. I think that it's too tight. Sis is so sweet. She thought I was a size small and I'm not. Um, and it stretches to fit, but because of the kind of fabric it is, you kind of lose a little bit of the color. But let me try it on for y'all because these two dresses, honey, are a vibe. The black dress, a simple black stiletto, probably do the aqua zero heels. This leopard dress and those appliques on your hands, when I talk about avant-garde, okay, what I'm talking about just like really doing the most. I might have to pull up in it. I, I might because she's going to send me a medium. I don't have it yet and I may have to pull out, pull out this small because it's going to be a moment. And then the last dress that I'm going to bring is the Raban one. You know that Raban used to be Paco Raban. It's now Raban. Also another item that was featured in the Farfetch video. Um, it is just simple, easy to wear. And what I love about this as well is the fabric. And so it can be easily dressed up and down. It's just like this stretch cotton material or I think it's viscose. And so a number of things will go with this, honestly. I mean, I could put on my moto jacket and my Western boots, my Zara Western boots with this and call it a day. Again, I'm not 100% sure like what my schedule is gonna be while I'm there. Um, I have something I know for 
Friday night and for Saturday night. Saturday is kind of up in the air and Saturday during the day. Um, I'm arriving Friday afternoon and I'm leaving Sunday night. So it's a short trip. And so I don't need to overbook my schedule, but I also just don't have any idea of what I'm going to do, honestly. Um, the last thing that I think I am going to bring just, you know, in, in case of, I don't really know, is the outfit formula, formula that I mentioned to you in my holiday dressing video, which is to go for a dressy top and a pair of denim. I'm definitely going to do the Margiela's and I have so many of these kind of like dressy tops y'all and so I really don't even know where to start. This is one I got from Lisbon. It's by a brand called Alexio Ulibari and basically I don't know if I've ever actually worn this y'all. I think I wore this out like <clears throat> not out y'all to film a podcast episode. And it's interesting the way, the way that you are supposed to do this little piece because it can be worn a million and one different ways. It just kind of has hooks throughout that you can attach. So one of the ways is to bring this back around. You're saying it, it's just one big ruffle. I think that would be really cute. Or I could do my off-shoulder um, top by age. I'm not sure. I don't want to bring both, though, because both of those are kind of voluminous, and they would um, take up a lot of space in my suitcase. Last thing, though, I just saw at the corner of my eye. Oh, wait. <gasps> I've worn this twice, y'all. I wore it once. Um, for a podcast episode and what size is this y'all it's H&M studio I got it from the H&M in New York and Times Square but okay hear me out I was saying that I wore it twice once for a podcast live taping and once at a um fashion show for fashion week in February hold on ha! <laughs> this is why we have to have these moments with a real nasty earring with the I'm talking about one that's that's Hugh Hefner playboy mansion nasty hold on I didn't want to do this to these people, but I, I don't have a choice. I don't. My, my, my. My, my, my. My, 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 my. You show sure look good tonight. <laughs> It's not a red dress and high heels, but I'm put on that MFK, that sweet perfume, and it's going to look good on me. So, y'all let me know down below, what am I missing? Um, I'm staying at a hotel that, unfortunately, the pool is closed, so I'm not even going to bring really any swimwear like that. I may bring something easy to wear, like just to lay out by the beach. I think that's one of the last things I'll do before heading to the airport. Um, but other than that... That's what I'm thinking as of right now for M-I-A-M-I, -I -I, baby. That's going to be the looks. Y'all stay tuned. I cannot wait to get out of this cold weather and to get to Miami. And that's going to wrap up this episode of Vlogmas. If you have enjoyed it thus far, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Y'all, I literally was watching someone's video recently and have been watching her videos for months now. And for some reason, I went to like her actual channel, like her homepage to find the video and realized that I was not subscribed to her channel. 
But because I watch her videos frequently, the algorithm kept putting them kind of in front of me. So it's quite possible that you have watched a few of my videos and you were not subscribed. And without being subscribed, you will miss something. Trust me, there will be videos that you will not see because I will not show up on your subscriptions feed, okay? So please subscribe. We have a good time around these parts. I'll see y'all in Miami over on social media. Make sure you're following me there. And otherwise, I'll see y'all in the next episode of Vlogmas. Peace.